Why should you put there? Here he comes. A fashionable five minutes late. Hey, only five minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Hey, you got a lot of talents. Should do this for. Hey, how was how was the ride? The ride was good. This, so, this is the purpose of the ride. This is the hard bit. They changed That's the recipe up. They changed it. It's good. It's yeah. Even better. Yeah. You carbon up. He wants to lose weight. Yeah. I just want to bulk. <laughs> I just want to bulk for life. Love and life. <laughs> I've got a big bit of mayo right here. That's right. <laughs> hey, Chris, great. I want your life. I want your life. You want my life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As if I'm even for your life. <laughs> So this is the part of the video that I get to deliver on my promise, which is the title of this video. What are my thoughts on my Merida School Tour 8000E after riding it for the last couple weeks? It's almost been a month, I think. In 2020, I've ridden three bikes. I started it on a giant TCR, which I've had, had for about four or five years. It was a rim version, obviously. Then I moved on to a Merida Reacto 8000E, which is an aero bike, similarly spec'd out as this. And now I'm on the Merida Scultura 8000E 2021. So according to Strava and my year in sport, I've done 18,000 kilometers this year so far. That's not pro kilometers by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm no slouch either. So having done all that, I've got some thoughts on the bikes that I've been riding. I wanna talk about three things today, handling, comfort, and just the overall ride feel. So how does this bike actually handle? Well, when it's a Tuesday and I'm tipping it in and the road is smooth and predictable, I am just fully confident in this bike. It is, it handles like an absolute dream. I can really lean it in, get my elbow real low and my hands are nowhere near the brakes. But, but as soon as there is some, uh, you know, cracks in the road, uneven surface, all that chatter comes up the rear end of the bike and my fingers are reaching closer and closer to the brakes and I'm watching John Odoms, the guy in front of me, just pulling away and I don't want to touch the brakes, but I know I have to because I'm worried that I'm going to lose it because the, vibe, the bike is vibrating so much. And that's when I noticed the handling of this bike falling down just a little bit. If it absorbed that road chatter a little bit more, um, I would definitely be able to send it downhills a little bit quicker. The Merida Reactor, on the other hand, that was a heavier bike. It had more carbon, it had 28C tires. It absorbed all those road bumps and just carried its speed much better through the corners. But that's an aero bike, different kind of category. Um, but it's just something I'm noticing uh, about this bike. The more and more I ride it, downhills very quick. I will get better though um, in time, but the handling is nothing to worry about. Um, it's stable, it's predictable, and I can take my hands off the bars without worrying about the front end going to slip out underneath me if there's a strong gust of wind like uh, the reactor. It feels really immersive when I'm riding it, um, which is a nice, confident feeling. So overall, it handles well, and it's a responsive bike. Speaking about uneven roads, that brings me onto comfort. and. I've, I've had some pretty long days in the saddle with this bike, um, over a hundred kilometers, you know, four or five hours sort of thing. And I have no real issues with comfort. Um, usually um, after long periods of time, I start to feel it in my lower back, like a lot of people probably do. Um, so on bikes like the TCR, I definitely noticed my lower back after really long days, but on bikes like the Reacto, plenty of carbon, um, really stable. Um, it absorbed a lot of that road chatter. So I was fine going all day with no real issues. I think this bike falls somewhere in between and I wouldn't call it the most comfortable bike. Um, I'd love to ride something like a BMC time, no, road machine, cause that's marketed as a comfortable like all round road bike. But this bike does a pretty good job. I think I need to give it a little bit more time, have a couple more long days in the saddle and see how it goes. Oh. When the road gets really uneven, um, I have to stand up. The vibrations through the back end of the bike are just too much, but that's likely you're gonna run into that with most bikes anyway. Um, but definitely a bit quicker on this bike. 
And lastly, what's the overall ride feel of this bike? I mean, how does it go on the flats? How does it climb? Is the power transfer good? Well, on the flats, it doesn't feel as good as the Reacto. The Reacto was really good in a straight line. So when you had your elbows in like an aero tuck position, um, you didn't have to do too much with your core. The, the bike would sort of just stay very still beneath you. Whereas on the Skulltura, I'm finding I'm have to engage, engage my core a little bit more to keep the bike from rocking around. But that's a pretty small price to pay for a lighter bike and a more all round bike. The, this bike ha climbs so much better than the reactor. The reactor felt slow, sluggish, like it, as soon as the road went uphill, it just felt like the bike was going backwards and I was just dropping gears madly. Um, whereas this bike, um, it carries speed nicely up into the hill and then you kind of just stand up and it just sort of rocks beneath you as you're climbing. And having a nice feeling bike when you're climbing is a big deal in my opinion because yeah, hills are tough so I want to make them easier on myself and have a comfortable bike to do that with the power transfer this bike's got through axles and it feels stiff overall when I start sprinting the bike just goes immediately with me I've got no issues with power transfer the only time that you're noticing that all your power is not getting into the ground is when the roads uneven and the back end starts chattering it's hard to keep that power consistent on the Merida Reactor, I had no issues with that. It felt really planted, really solid. Um, and that's my only gripe with the power transfer of this bike. It actually feels stiffer than the TCR, which is known for its stiffness. But that's most likely because of the through axles on this bike, which really add a lot of stiffness. So what are my overall concluding thoughts on this? The riding that we do in the area that I live in, it's a mix of everything. There's uneven road surfaces, there's smooth roads, there's hills, there's crew races all the time in the summer. So having an all round bike that's just fun to ride in all occasions and does well at everything is kind of what I need <laughs> rather than what I exactly want. When I had the aero bike, I found that it was awesome on the flats, but on the hills, I just wasn't having as much fun. And we ride hills every weekend. So this is a bike that just does it all with ease and allows you to spend more time riding and not worrying about <laughs> whether the bike's good on what terrain you're riding on. And that's kind of invaluable, I think. Um, anyway, this is initial thoughts video. So if you liked it, let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys tomorrow.